I was in New Orleans trying to help them people look at their situation realistically. They want you to give them money to rebuild, and they need to fill it in. I told them, where's the river? I point up. I said, you don't point up at the river. <laughs> now that ought to be crochet framed and sold at the river. <laughs> Send them dirt. You know, if New Orleans is the home of the blues, how come we didn't get some blues songs out of all that misery? When the hurricane came, we should have seen a songwriter bursting through the roof of his house with just what he needed, a guitar and a bag of pot. <laughs> Waving away the rescue copter. I can't like this with all this wind. <laughs> Our recent issue of Time Magazine calls it a marijuana instead of America. It's an issue today. Big surprise, this country was founded on it. The people that came across in them little boats were looking for a place to plant dope. <laughs> well, they were going to call it freedom of religion, but then dope was in the religion and they were stuck. <laughs> Far away from all these rules over here, the first pioneers went to look for a place to smoke dope. And they landed by mistake in Massachusetts. It's too cold to grow dope. You never got a baggie from a dealer who says this is some good homegrown from Boston. <laughs> but you can't just head west across Pennsylvania and Mass. It's thick with trees and you can hardly get to this day. You can't tell where the cities are unless you know they're there and take the exit that you just missed. <laughs> I've done it, I've been across it. You can't see nothing till Pittsburgh. And then the beautiful Ohio Valley opens up. And when the settlers saw the beautiful Ohio, and the Indians were down there, they were growing corn in straight rows. But the settlers thought, we can grow the dope in between the rows. <laughs> So we got them to show us how to make the corn, and then we got rid of them. We showed them an area we had farm a little to the west called Indianana. See, you're learning. You're learning here tonight. We shoved them into Indianana, and Ohio quickly filled up with people real happy to have a beautiful farm in Ohio. And them that came after that were pissed because they couldn't go to Indiana, that was full of the Indians. And if you've ever gone west across America looking for the land to get better, you're going to be disappointed. Because it turns into Missouri, even though there's a river there, it doesn't seem to matter to the land. It's still some poor shit. And that turns into Kansas. You can't grow dope in Kansas. You can see it from Colorado. They're lying. They go, ain't that dope down there? <laughs> but you don't want to end up in the Great Plains of the United States in a wagon and unable to repair it. And it can break down a lot of ways. There's wood in the spokes, and that needs to be a woodworker. There's a metal rim around that to protect the wood that broke anyway. I don't know how they welded back in colonial time. There's bearings. It's a big deal. If your wagon wheel breaks, and you're out on that prairie, that's where you settle, that's where you're from. You don't think people had it out for Topeka, do you? <laughs> That's why if you ever get a chance to go across America, you'll see every big ranch has a broken wheel out by the mailbox. <laughs> it is true! Damn it, I know what I'm talking about. I have set myself in my place in history. I know my past. I know the deep past and what has won in the past. The Romans conquered the world, not because they were confused spoon fork type Americans, trying to be a fork and a spoon at the same time. 
The Romans were Romans. They didn't wear socks and sandals. <laughs> socks are fuzzy and friendly. You want an army of fuzzy, friendly guys in their socks? When a guy approached you wearing socks, do you think that's a bitch about to hit me? <laughs> you think he's looking for his shoes? But he happens to run across his sandals and is too damn lazy to take off his socks! Sandals are leather against skin. It's sexy, it's powerful. And when them pretty Italian boys that come marching wear it, oh, they had long, thong sandals that went all the way up her leg. I saw it on HBO. <laughs> They'd all, it didn't even matter they had a faggy skirt, because it did. They'd all come marching with their shield and their sword and a little faggy hat with a broom down the middle, because they had a sweep so they didn't get any dust on their feet. <laughs> cohesive, they had an image, they knew who they were. This elected different presidents all the time by a thin margin screws up the rest of the world because we could end up anybody. There's a whole lot of difference between the people that we put in. We just found out. We thought he was a black guy and he doesn't even have a white wife. He doesn't qualify. <laughs> Chicago politics without getting dirty. Right, that's the big lie. We need a dirtier guy to run our place. That's why I'm telling you Rome did so good. They had a Caesar that didn't listen to nobody and killed them that had anything to say. He's a leader, made him champion, also because he was an old guy and he's a wily guy. He was suspicious of everybody, including them Arabs. I was down in Egypt back then, so he sent a spy to Egypt to see what that is up to. The spy come back and said, don't even worry about them, they're just stacking rocks. <laughs> they're rock stackers. Caesar said, well, what if they're done with that stack of rocks? Then what? The spy said, they built another one, they got 8, 10, 12 of them down there now. <laughs> Caesar said, still, I must respect their energy. And the spy said, yeah, but they're stupid. Look, here's their blueprint. And the plan was for a big square building. But they got unions. So each shift... <laughs> yes, a pyramid is a cube built by the union! <laughs> 